Hello everyone! This is the second part of our dynamic cloth tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to drape a simple long top. Download links are included in the description. This is a simple untextured top, but it has been UV mapped if you would like to texture it yourself. In this example, we are going to use Victoria 4 from Das 3D. You can also use the top that has been included for Pauline and follow along using Pauline instead. In the previous video, we draped our cloth over a static object. Now we're going to use a figure and set our figure up with a simple animation. So, first let's load our figure. Let's make sure we're on the last frame of our 30 frame animation and choose a pose for Victoria 4. Choose a simple standing pose and make sure that Victoria's limbs stay clear of her body during the entire animation. If arms or legs are moving through the body during the animation, we will have problems. Poses are designed to be static, so it will be up to ourselves to make sure the animation we create works for dynamic clothing. Dynamic clothing often comes with a draping pose that replaces the default pose on frame 1. This is done to optimize the clothing design. For instance, arms are often moved down so that we don't end up with excessive amounts of fabric under the arms, which will easily happen if we try to design the clothing for the default T-pose. For this example though, we will just use the default pose as the meshes have been designed to work with that. Everything looks fine, so we can move to the next step. Let's load our clothing. Let's make sure we have stopped the animation and are on frame 1. Now we can load the top. Some clothing comes pre-parented to the figure. This helps in setting up your scene and moving the figure around as the clothing will follow. However, I tend to let the end user do the actual parenting because I have noticed there are differences in how the simulation turns out depending on whether the clothing is parented or not, so it can be a matter of taste. We can leave the clothing unparented for now. Let's switch over to the cloth room. Now we can pretty much repeat what we did in the first episode. First we create a new simulation. 30 frames is still good for a simple animation. This time we can also click the box for cloth self collision. This will make the cloth collide against itself as well as colliding against the figure, which helps to keep the cloth from intersecting with itself. The next step is to clothify the object. Make sure to select the correct object in the drop down menu. The last step is to choose our collision object, this time Victoria 4. Again, we can set the collision offset and collision depth to 0.200. This is what I use for my starting point. Leave the dynamic settings at default and calculate the simulation. Now you have your first clothing simulation. That's it for this time. Make sure to look out for the next part in this series where we'll get into simple layering using a top and a skirt. Happy rendering and see you all next time. <laughs>